Hi there, it's Justin Lubino with Senior Advisors. Um, hope everyone had a great weekend. And uh, this is our eighth uh, weekly Facebook Live session uh, where we discuss a um, key Medicare topic. And, uh, and then we have a, a live question and answer as well. Uh, folks are able to ask questions throughout the, the session here in the video in the Facebook window. Uh, just type in your question at any time. It can be related to uh, the topic that we're discussing, or it can be any Medicare-related question that you have and you'd like an answer to. Uh, you can certainly uh, type that into the window, and we can we can help you out with that. Um, today's topic is about the drug coverage with Medicare, which is called Part D, and specifically how the uh, Medicare Part D donut hole works. So we're going to review how the uh, Part D of Medicare Donut Hole works and um, also discuss some changes to how it's going to work for, for 2019 as well. All right. Uh, before we get started, um, we do like to offer a, a free gift card, um, a $10 gift card for our trivia question. So uh, it can be used to either Amazon or uh, Starbucks. And uh, today's first trivia question is uh, which Medicare supplement or Medigap plan uh, basically covers everything under Part A and Part B of Medicare except for one thing, the Part B deductible. So which Medicare supplement plan uh, covers everything under Part A and everything under Part B except for the Part B deductible, which this year is $183. The first one to type in the correct answer into the window will win the, the gift card uh, for today for either Amazon or Starbucks. Again, it's a $10 gift card, uh, and you can have up to one guess um, in the window there. And it looks like uh, Claudia has uh, guessed Part G. Um, well, it's not called Part G, but it is called uh, Plan G, so I'll give you credit. Uh, for that one, Claudia. So um, it's the Plan G Medicare Supplement or Medigap Plan. Uh, basically covers everything under Part A of Medicare for the hospital benefit and uh, Part B of Medicare for your doctor's visits and uh, outpatient procedures, uh, except for the Part B deductible. So Claudia, uh, yep, I'll give you credit for, for, for that answer. It's a, it's a Plan G supplement. So all right, so let's jump into this. And, and um, this, this explanation today, just to let you know, there is a video out on YouTube uh, that, that I created. It's about a 15-minute video that goes into um, this, this same type of information, but it goes a little bit deeper than we're going to go through today. Uh, it also goes through a, an example, um, so it's a little bit of a longer video that you can watch uh, if you're interested after today's uh, presentation to get more information. So, But this slide here covers um, those different parts underneath Part D of uh, Medicare. The first step uh, is the annual deductible. And um, in 2018, you're going to see these values that are crossed out. 2019 is the orange values. Um, the highest deductible a Part D plan can have this year in 2018 is $405. Uh, next year, it's going up to $415. Not all Part D plans have the deductible, but if they do have a deductible, it can't be any higher than um, $415 next year uh, for the Part D coverage. In most cases, the plans that do have this deductible, um, it, it generally only applies to the higher tiered, um, you know, brand name drugs or high, even higher tier generics. Um, but if there's lower cost uh, generics uh, that are in tier one or tier two, in most cases, the deductible does not apply. So uh, this will only impact people that are generally on more expensive medications uh, if they if they enroll in a plan with a deductible. After the deductible is the initial coverage level with Part D of Medicare. And all 20, there's 25 or so different Part D plans out there. They all have these same rules, by the way. So uh, the initial coverage with Part D is 30, based on the retail cost of the drugs, up to $3,820 next year. Uh, as long as your medication retail costs for the entire year are less than $3,820, then you're gonna stay in this initial coverage level for the entire year. And the reason that's important is you're basically just paying a copay or a coinsurance amount uh, for your medication while you're in this uh, initial coverage level. If, however, you have expensive medications, generally those higher, 
cost brand name medications, um, you're most likely going to exceed this $3,820, which puts you into what's called the, the coverage gap uh, or the donut hole. This step three here is, um, is the donut hole, essentially, where your coverage uh, is not as good anymore um, while you're in the, the donut hole. And basically, in 2018, so the current year, if you're in the donut hole, you pay 35% for your brand name drugs and 44% for generics. Okay, this is getting a little bit better next year where you're going to pay 25% for brand name drugs and 37% for generics while you're in the donut hole. Okay, so um, in 2018, you were going to stay in the donut hole until you reach this 5,000 true out of pocket cost. In 2019, it's going up to 5,100. Okay, this is a little confusing. The, the true out of pocket cost uh, calculation because it, it, it's retail cost to get into the donut hole and it's true out of pocket cost to get out of the donut hole. Um, the way the true out of pocket calculation works, it's everything you have spent for your medications up to the coverage gap. And while you're in the coverage gap, the amount of money you spent for your drugs, but it also includes the amount of money that the pharmaceutical company discounts for brand name drugs while you're in the donut hole. So the reason that's important is you want to get to, if you happen to hit the donut hole, you want to get to catastrophic coverage as quickly as possible to get to the other side where you're going to have co good coverage again um, and be protected. So um, this pharmaceutical discount is also increasing from 50% up to 70% next year while you're in the donut hole. So in, in theory, you should get to the, if you happen to be on expensive medications, you should get the catastrophic coverage uh, much sooner in 2019 uh, than you would in 2018. And, and rough numbers, this should save folks between $700 and $1,000 um, out of pocket, true, you know, true cost to you for your drugs. Uh, by getting to the catastrophic coverage more quickly if you're on those expensive medications. If you're reaching that donut hole, um, you're, you're likely to hit the catastrophic coverage sooner next year because of these changes that were made in the um, Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, which was in February. Um, it's actually going to improve Medicare Part D for folks that are on expensive uh, medications. So um, once you do get into catastrophic coverage, here you're only going to pay the greater of 5% the cost of the drug or $8.50 for brand name drugs or $3.40 for generics. So again, there's protection or coverage on this side of the donut hole, uh, just like there was on the uh, step two. And then while you're in the coverage gap, you still have some coverage, but it's not as good. Um, you're paying more out of pocket cost um, for your drugs while you're in that, that coverage gap or, or donut hole. Okay. And that's basically how Part D of Medicare works. Again, these rules apply to all you know, 25 different Part D plans that are available. They all have this, uh, you know, initial coverage, you know, the gap or, or donut hole and then catastrophic coverage. Uh, the same rules apply to all those Part D plans that are out there. Um, we recommend using Medicare's website as a great tool to figure out which is the best uh, Part D plan based upon your specific list of medications. Uh, so we recommend that tool to, to do that analysis. We do that for all of our clients. Um, you can do it yourself if you're comfortable using um, the tool on Medicare's website. We also have a form on our website at senior-advisors.com um, where you can fill out the form for a free prescription analysis, and we'll do that for, uh, for you as well. So are there any questions out there either on this um, particular topic, uh, Part D of Medicare, the donut hole, um, or any other uh, Medicare-related questions? If so, you can uh, type them in the window. And while we're waiting um, for any questions to come in, um, just a, a reminder that the full 15-minute uh, video with, with an example of, of Part D is out there on our YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to that if you want to get um, more information, more videos that are out there uh, discussing this uh, Part D of Medicare and the donut hole uh, example as well. So I'll give it another minute here. All right, Liz has a question. Is there a way to set up automatic withdrawal for Part D premiums? So 
when you enroll in a, a Part D plan, you have a few different options um, to set up your payment. Uh, you can do an automatic withdrawal from your Social Security check. You can, in certain cases, if you're enrolling directly with a carrier, uh, you can do an automatic bank uh, withdrawal as well. That's, that's another option with certain carriers, depending on who you're enrolling with, and if you're enrolling directly with the carrier. And then the third option um, is the direct bill, where you get a bill in the mail uh, for that monthly Part D premium. We generally recommend that third option. Um, how it, I know it seems like it could be inefficient, um, but for the Part D coverage, uh, these plans change every single year. And um, that's one of the reasons we sent out a letter in September to all of our, our clients to review their Part D analysis, uh, make sure they have the right Part D plan for the following year. Because even if the drug list doesn't change, the, the plans change, the premium, the formulary, which is the, you know, the drugs that are covered, um, the co-pays, et cetera, change every year. So we don't recommend the automatic payments for that reason uh, with the Part D plans. Um, if, if you do need to make a change, uh, it could take Social Security months to get things updated correctly on your Social Security statement or your, your deposits for Social Security checks. Um, this is why we don't normally recommend doing the automatic withdrawal from your Social Security check. And for the same reason, uh, the automatic payment from your bank account for the Part D plan, because those plans change every year, you know, you could have a delay in getting that uh, payment information updated with the bank. So we normally recommend the direct bill. Uh, what we tell people though, because some of these premiums can be as low as $12 a month or $20 a month for these plans, when you get that first bill with the coupon book, um, a lot of, if you have the money, we tell people just, if you want to pay off the rest of the year, call them up and you can make a payment for the rest of the year, you know, $20 times the, let's say there's six months left in the year or, or 12 months. Um, and if you have the cash and you don't want to deal with sending a check every month, you know, that's another option. Or if you want to set up a bill pay from your own bank account where you control the money going out, um, that's another option if, it, if it's more efficient for, for people to make their payments. So I hope that helps, Liz. Um, the other question that came up, Claudia, are all prescriptions covered? Um, the short answer is no. Um, Every Part D plan has their own formulary of covered medications and copays, or you know what the drugs are going to cost uh, for that particular Part D plan. However, every Part D plan has to cover at least two drugs in each therapeutic category. So what that means is, is some people are concerned. You know, is this plan going to cover the unknown of what might happen throughout the year? I might get prescribed another drug. You know, how, how do I, how am I going to be sure that this is going to cover my medication? The reality is you can't be 100% sure. However, because it, every Part D plan has to cover at least two drugs in each therapeutic category, there's a, there's a high probability if you get prescribed something the following year, you know, the following year, that it would be covered on the, on the formulary for your Part D plan. If it's not covered, you have a couple of options. One option is to go back to the doctor um, and ask him if one of those two drugs that are covered would work uh, for the condition that was prescribed. And uh, the other option is you can have the doctor file an exception with the Part D plan. All Part D plans have to have this exception process. Um, if for some reason those other two medications will not work for you, uh, you can file an exception with the Part D plan and have it reviewed and approved, assuming it's you know, medically necessary, um, to be added to that formulary. And normally that becomes like a tier four, uh, so it could be a more expensive, you know, drug, but at least it would be covered and you'd have some, rather than paying the full cost, uh, you'll have some coverage uh, for that, that particular medication. So I hope that helps uh, answer your question, Claudia. We'll give it one more minute and see if there's any other questions out there. And while we're waiting here, um, as far as next week goes, we originally booked eight um, 
scheduled sessions for this 1030 time slot and we had topics um, that were pre-scheduled. Uh, we're, the plan is to continue to do this going forward. Uh, we've gotten decent feedback from folks that have joined and see, see value in these, these sessions. So uh, we do plan to continue uh, doing a, a video each, each Monday at 1030, an opportunity for people to ask questions. And a, you know, we'll discuss a brief Medicare topic as well, just to kind of continue the, the dialogue. And um, so that will be the plan going forward. Uh, the topic will be determined you know, on that particular day as far as you know, if anything has changed in the prior week uh, related to Medicare or any, any good uh, use cases or stories that have come up in the last week, we'll, we'll touch on those uh, during these, uh, these Monday sessions. So uh, we do plan to continue this uh, going forward. So. If there's no additional questions, uh, we're going to wrap up uh, today's session. And um, I hope everyone has a great week, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.